new way of doing things. Gonna try it out for this month. Uh, I'm going to present to you right now all of the movements for a specific workout. This workout that I'll go over right now is going to be the leg strength workout. So in this workout, for the next four weeks, we do have some overall goals going on. One of those goals is to increase your leg strength. That's gonna be a goal in any program, right? You wanna definitely get stronger. So here specifically, we wanna increase your overall leg strength. We wanna probably start off with lighter weights. We will be working with a rep range of anywhere from six to 10 reps. Again, no clock, just using reps, three rounds of everything. Uh, and so here in the first week, because again, we'll be going through this for four weeks, start with lighter weights, get yourself comfortable with the movements, and then each week you can progress if you feel ready, if your form is spot on, if you feel very efficient in the movement, if you're not feeling challenged, then you can go up and wait. If none of those things are being hit, then don't go up and wait, stay with a lighter weight. Again, can't stress this enough, heavier isn't always better. Do I want you to push yourself and challenge yourself? Fuck yes, absolutely. But getting the mechanics down is way more important than lifting a heavier weight. And oftentimes that does mean going much lighter and also slower so you can really connect to your body. The other piece that we're gonna be working on is a bit of mobility. We will be touching on Cossack squats again in this program. We did this in our first program. And so that's going to be really addressing any tightness that you have in your inner thighs. And it's also going to be addressing and touching on and making you very aware of any tight ankle issues that you may have. So let's start off there. The mobility for the next four weeks, we'll be going into Buddha squat. I'm gonna show you how to do it assisted with a heavy kettlebell. And then we'll also be going into a side to side abductor stretch. So doing Buddha with a heavy kettlebell, I'm gonna go this way. The kettlebell has to be heavy enough that you can leverage your weight with it, right? You can use it as a counterbalance so that you can lean back on it and it's not gonna, you're not gonna fall backwards, right? So this can't be done with something light. If you don't have a heavy kettlebell, another great option is to use the side of a couch or say a railing to a staircase, anything like that, okay? So as we're going into Buddha, I always advise trying to get the toes to go straight ahead because again, that's gonna show you anything that's going on, any tightness with the ankles. Notice if your ankles always turn out. If you start with them forward and you look down and say your right is out to the side, your right toes are out to the side, the body wants the path of least resistance. So it is opening up because there is resistance. That resistance is tightness. It could be from so many different things but just bring awareness to that. Like, oh, that side of my body is a little bit tighter, specifically, most likely, the ankle, if that's what's happening. So again, starting with the toes relatively straight ahead, we can go ahead and actually reach down and grab the bell, or again, if you're holding on to, say, a banister, grab that banister, and from here, you're gonna begin to sit the hips down. Now, we don't need to go super, super low here on the first one. You can rise back up, get a bit of length through the hamstrings, and then again, pulling yourself down. Noticing this as you're pulling yourself down. Again, do the ankles want to open up? Do the toes lift up? Any of these sorts of things. As you're going through, start to assess, could I use the kettlebell as leverage or is it gonna fall over on me? I'm noticing right here, it's a little too close for me to be able to use it the way I want to. So I'm gonna scoot it out. And again, this time we're gonna drop on into our best version of our Buddha. Okay, now remember with this one, we're trying to not cave the knees in, right? Don't let them tip in. We want to really spread them wide, okay? And very important that we have a long, tall spine. So if we're here, it's not as beneficial, right? Things have turned off. We're in a very passive position and we want to be in a very, very active position as if we were squatting with weight, right? So that's kind of the point of this one. So in our warm ups. We'll be going through Buddhas either assisted or not, okay? We will be going through Buddhas with a twist, side to side to get into our thoracic area. Again, if you need to hold on to something, it's a great tool, right? There's nothing wrong with holding on to something to assist you in your Buddha. And just so you can see the Buddha from the front, again, as we're going into our Buddha, we want to make sure our knees don't cave in. Okay, if anything, they're driving out further and further and further. 
our overall goal is to get more and more comfortable in this very, very deep squat position. Now, as you know, in our classes, I'm not really ever encouraging ass to grass, which would be a squat like that with weight. This is specifically for mobility. Again, we're not looking to necessarily put weight on and squat like that. Some of us can, some of us can't, okay? Our side to side adductor stretch would be next. So we start with our toes straight ahead, just like we would with our Cossack squat. So this is prep for your Cossack. You're gonna sit on down, and again, I'm not going that low, right? But just sitting side to side, letting this inner thigh really start to lengthen. Sitting low, letting the side, sorry, the insides of your thighs lengthen. As we're here, make sure that as you're sitting into this position, you feel really strong in this leg, right? Because this is the working leg. This one isn't gonna be doing too, too much when we are in our Cossack. And that's almost a lot. It does pull you back up to the top, okay? So that's our side to side adductor stretch. Let's get into the movements for your first set. We have single arm wrapped reverse lunge. What the hell is that? So if you are just starting out, again, start lighter. I will show you as well with a dumbbell in case you don't have access to a kettlebell. Okay, so wrapped position with kettlebells, always the front of the body, they are right here, okay? This is a single arm racked reverse lunge. In our sets, we'll be going through eight per leg. Once you finish one side, you'll put the weight down and you'll rack and go on the other side. We will be racked starting on the right side. That means the right leg stays in place as the left is going back, okay? So we go into our clean. We don't need to clean from behind uh, the heels. We can clean from right here, right below us. So remember though, that when we do clean, let's go this way, we don't wanna be here, right? So what's wrong with this position? Shoulders are in line with my hips. What's gonna be doing all the work on that? My back, that would be mostly, there's not much power that my legs can generate when they're at the same, when my hips are at the same height as my shoulders. So to get those legs involved, we've got to come to here, right? So we clean, and then we would be stepping back eight times, inhaling as we come down, exhale as we push tall to the top. Inhale down, exhale push. Say we get to eight, we bring the bell to the floor. We will take a moment, we'll reset, pull, and then start our set on the other side, okay? So that's our single arm racked reverse lunge. Now if you're using a dumbbell, same idea. We could pull from the floor, make sure those shoulders are higher than your hips. We clean to the rack, and then we go back. So all possible, even if you don't have a kettlebell. We'll then be going into kettlebell goblet squats. These aren't new for us. We just keep on working them, hoping that we get a little bit better and better and better. So with our kettlebell goblet squat, we can of course clean from the floor. Instead of that single arm clean, this would be a two-handed clean. So same idea, shoulders higher than the hips, pack the shoulders onto your back, okay? Create that wedge, clean, and now you're in the start of your goblet position, right? So we pull ourselves to the bottom and we push the floor away. We inhale, pull ourselves to the bottom, exhale, push the floor away. As we're going down, we think of spreading the floor apart with our feet, okay? Key parts on that, go as low as you can go. Don't worry about how low I go or anyone else you see. If you need to, pull a box out so that you're sitting to a box. That is a fantastic tool, especially if you're somebody who's experiencing any discomfort specifically in your back, I would say you're most likely going too low. And to give yourself a little bit of a guide and pull a box out to sit to the box, okay? The last piece for this first set will be calf raise. So option one, no weight at all. We'd be going through sets of 15 for pretty much all four weeks, okay? So as we're doing our calf raise, you wanna make sure that this top position, you're not here. 
So you see how my ankles just went out to the sides. We want to make sure that the ankles are staying nice and strong, right? You're pushing on all of the toes. You're not caving out to the sides, okay? So for 15 reps, we try our best to keep the ankles kind of right in line, right where we want them. At the end of those 15, we're going to try to hold for 30 seconds. Some things that may come up for you are you might start to feel this in your glutes. You might also start to feel a bit of a contraction happening in your pelvic floor. That's great. They're all related. They're all connected. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on. So round two, or sorry, shall I say set two, we go into Cossack. We go into split stance, hip hinged, lunges. And then we go into Copenhagen's. Copenhagen's are great and they actually have more to do, I guess, with your core and your adductors than specifically your legs, but your adductors are part of your legs. So, Cossack. <clears throat> when we go into Cossack, again, it does not matter how low you go. Go as low as you can while still maintaining good form, good control, and feeling strong, right? There's a point of no return. So make sure you kind of avoid that point of no return. Quick little tidbit, we know this from previous experience, it sometimes takes us a moment to get our feet in the right position. So give yourself a rep or two to get your feet into the right position. We will be holding a weight, if we are using a weight, in the goblet position. From here, as you drop down to one side, the foot of the other side picks up and we push back to center. We go to the other side, toes turn up over here, and then we push back to center, sitting as low as we can with control and then pushing back, okay? Side to side, and you'll see my left side, I'm able to get a bit lower than my right. This is what happened in our first round of programming. I was supposed to be working on my mobility on the right side, but clearly I have not been. But <clears throat> make sure um, that you pay attention to these little imbalances, right? Because they just help you be a more embodied and empowered being. When we are doing our side to side position, make sure this isn't your position, okay? This is like a flat back position, okay? We actually want to try to be as vertical with the torso as we can. That's not even that vertical, what I just showed you, but that's the goal, okay? This is not a lateral lunge. It is a sister of a lateral lunge. This is not a lateral lunge. Lateral lunge is the torso does come forward a bit more. Cossack, you're supposed to be actually more and more and more upright. Okay? Okay, split stanced, uh, sorry, split stance, hip hinged lunge. So what this one will be, is we start with those feet split apart, hence the name, okay? We squeeze the front leg and we're gonna hip hinge slightly. This is where the torso is going to stay, okay? Notice that the weights did not come forward, okay? I didn't let the weights slip forward. I've got them pulled back, okay? So the lats stay engaged the whole time. The reason we're squeezing the front leg nice and strong is because we are trying to specifically work this muscle right here, which is uh, utilized by straightening the leg, okay? So we squeeze that front leg nice and strong. We're in our hip hinge. We stay in our hip hinge as we lower down, and then we squeeze that front leg nice and strong. Lowering down, and then big squeeze. Inhaling down. Exhale, big, big squeeze. And that's that, okay? So it's a simple hip hinge position. I'll show you without weights real quick. So if this is our start position, again, we're in this hip hinge. If necessary, you could come here each time. I guess that's an overcorrection. But we could come here each time as long as once we start to bend, we are in that hip hinge position, okay? Okay, the final piece of this set is going to be the Copenhagen. So, Copenhagen's, you will need your bench, and you're gonna also want to pad your bench because your ankles, well, thank you. I've shown these on Instagram good old Instagram, pad it up to whatever degree you feel necessary. You'll find out once you get going in them. But beginners, this is important. Beginners should be starting with the top leg fully on the bench. And this is where I will start in week one, okay? So what we do, we can be here on the uh, palm, 
We can also be down on the elbow if you have any wrist issues. So we are here, we press into the bent with the knee and the shin and the foot, this whole area. That's gonna light up the inner thigh. While lighting up the inner thigh, you're also using this side of the core to lift yourself up. So this right here is your starting position. There's already tension in this inner thigh because it's already pushing down on the floor, okay? From here, we are braced and we squeeze and bring it back down. Squeeze and bring it back down, okay? So it's this squeezing position over and over and over again. As we start to feel more comfortable, we can give ourselves a little bit more distance. The less of your foot that is on, or the less of your leg that is on the bench, the stronger you do need to be, otherwise you will feel pain in your knee, and we do not want that. Okay, so if you're feeling pain in the knee, you need more support. Over time, over the course of the four weeks, you'll see me come to this position, okay? Again, this is a bit more advanced. From here, this top leg squeezes so strong, so, so strong. And then we squeeze and come back down. <sighs> squeeze and come back down, okay? So those are our Copenhagens. The final set, set three, we will be going into double clean reverse lunges. So I'm gonna show you with kettlebells. These can of course be done with dumbbells as well. So we do one double clean, bringing the weights up to the front rack position. And then from there, we'll go into six per leg reverse lunges. Okay, so that part I'm not too worried about. I know that you all know reverse lunges at this point, but let's go over it anyways. So starting from the floor, again, hips have to be lower than the shoulders. Shoulders are packed onto the back. We pull to the front rack position. So we just cleaned. We'll walk our feet in and then we'll inhale down, exhale push, switching sides, inhale down, exhale push, and just going side to side until we complete a total of six per side. We'll bring the feet apart and bring the weights back down to the floor. Pretty simple, right? Can be done with dumbbells as well. If time, that's what my notes say, if we have time, we will also go into foot elevated Cossack Romanian deadlift. I lost my words there for a second. So what this means is foot is elevated. This doesn't feel so great. So I'm gonna switch that out. I guess that would feel better if it's that way. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend right here. So foot is elevated, okay? Romanian deadlift means that the leg is bent, but not all the way bent, okay? So there's a slight bend to the leg. With this one, we will be sitting the hips back. You'll be going into a deadlift and squeezing to the top. So as I hip hinge, my knee also slightly bends, and then I squeeze to the top. You could do this holding the bell with two hands. You could do what I just did, hold the bell with one hand, helping to guide the hips back and then big squeeze up to the top, okay? So a couple of options on that one. Just so you can see from the side, I will do one this way. Okay, so foot is elevated, it's off to the side. Core is tight, shoulders are back. We're gonna start by hip hinging. Slight bend to the leg. So not a serious bend, but a slight bend for sure. And then from here, pulling to the top. Hip hinging, coming forward and then squeezing to the top. We should be feeling that one through the posterior chain. Okay, so those are all of our movements for our third program. I'm pretty excited about all of this. Um, I'm sure there will be little tweaks as I see how you all respond, um, but for the most part, this is what we're working with. So if you have questions, if you need a little bit more guidance, Keep following along on Instagram because I'm going to be going over these things, okay? And that is it. I'm stoked. <laughs>